Hey everybody and welcome to a comedic Wild Ride with Steve-O. I say that because this week's guest, Mark Norman, has got to be the most pure comedian I've ever met. The guy was born for this. He lives for this. He breathes it. It's just non-stop with him and it's so fun to be around him, man. And we go kind of nuclear on uh, Howard Stern. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, dude. It's it's tough, and 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 like, what do we got to lose? You know, like, wait until you hear how juicy that part gets. Wow. And uh, Mark Norman's very hungover. It's uh, it's pretty wild the whole time. And I remember thinking, oof, this one is gonna get us in trouble. So let's see if that happens, everybody. Let's get into it. It's like seven hundred years old. <laughs> And he's, I did his podcast, and he was skating when I showed up, and he's, his body, like, clicks. He, he's like an old printer. For sure. You know, he's so banged up. He's got 18 plates in his ass and, you know, a rod in his dick. Is he competing in the next X Games? I saw that. No I, way. He, he jumped into the best trick contest. I remember that. Um, I mean, dude, that was funny. We're going to have to keep that in. Keep it in. I, I, I love recording? Tony. Yeah. Oh, hey, what color do you want for the sign? Ooh, what do you got? Blue? Oh, dear, blue coming right up, what, pal. What variation of blue? Yeah, uh -oh. dude, dude, you tell me you like, you like, the, the like, gayest one you got. Uh, gay? I mean, I'll just go full pink. Oh, let's do pink. Yeah, boom. Pink it is, man. All right. All right, man. Uh, yeah. Since we are rolling. Yeah, Hell he's yeah. not on. Who cares? I uh, wanted to congratulate you on your special, man. Oh, thank you, sir. It's it's doing well, and uh, Netflix let me keep the R word, the Holocaust, slavery. I couldn't believe it. You really, really uh, made every effort to offend every person. <laughs> well, if you get it, everybody, then you're all right. You know, <laughs> I'm in, I'm inclusive. <laughs> yeah, you know? wasn't Norm Macdonald getting in trouble for the R word? Then he came on to to keep apologizing for yeah. the R-word and just kept making him worse. I uh, Yeah, well, Norm, you know, who knew he had cancer this whole time? And, uh, you know, they, they're canceling this guy, and you're like, let the man die in peace, you cum guzzlers. Jesus yeah. Christ. That's she the time when he should have came out that he had cancer, leave him alone. No. I know. That's no. how much integrity he had. Yeah, he was he was epic. He and, was and the guy. Did, did he really care that people were upset about it? He I, did. I actually. think his agents were like, dude, like, you can't say that. And so he went on to apologize, and he kept saying the art. Like, I just... You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what what was the forum in which he was I using mean, this offensive word? He said it on Howard Stern, yeah, Heimer, which is a big platform, obviously, and uh, he kept throwing it around. Right, and okay. uh, I think he said, "I have a nephew with Down syndrome mm -hmm. and autism." Are you offended when people say? Ret I I'm not. Like I mean, I'm not like. You I know. we can cut that out. I don't know if we can say it on YouTube. I, I don't know that that's a problem. Yeah, it was a hard R. We sound like pirates. Arr. Arr. <laughs> you know? Ah, uh, man, this is great. So, so uh, you're one of the few people who has the distinction of having been on the Wild Ride podcast now twice, and both times in person. Very few people have. Hell yeah. yeah, we did the New York one. Yeah, and uh, you were at Gotham Studios, and it was an honor to meet you. You know, watch you forever, and uh, here we are in the van getting uh, molested. You went on their podcast, uh, <laughs> yeah. you and Sam Morell. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah you did yeah, my we might pod. Be drunk. Oh, I forgot. That was a great ep. Well, was it cool, man? Oh, yeah, you got <laughs> real. You opened up. We kissed. It was great. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, your dude. lady was there. This is your, your dog. Yeah. I remember. So this Netflix special, Soup to Nuts. Oh, yeah. Is it your first special? First special on Netflix? First, I did a half hour on Netflix. They really make you earn it when you're a big, straight honky. Um, so I did a half hour, and then before that, I did a YouTube special for, for an hour, and then I did a Comedy Central hour, and then I did a Comedy Central half hour. So I've been through the ringer. Wow, how about So that's that? all new material every time. Every time, different material. And now I've put this out, and I'm out of material, and I'm doing the road, just half-baked premises, trying to piecemeal it together, and it's not pretty. 20 minutes on Lizzo. Jonah Hill, huh? Oh, what about that <laughs> submarine? Those queefs uh, were billionaires, you know? And I'm just trying to bullshit my way through it. I love that. That that's a strong way to promote your tour. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Come see me frazzle up there and freak out because I'm I'm panicking. 
And you know what? I think you can get away with that because you're just genuinely hilarious. Oh, I don't geez. think anybody's going to be dissuaded by Thanks. the idea of, oh, dude, we're going to go watch Mark Norman work on new material. That in itself is... Uh, pretty. If I was gay, I'd blow you. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's going pretty well. I'm pulling it off, you know, because the audience knows you now. And that, that's half the battle. When they know you, they can meet you halfway. They get what you're saying. They get what you're trying to say. But strangers, that's the hard people to make laugh. That, dude, that, that That's really the phenomena of podcasting. Huh? Yes. People legitimately get to know you. Exactly. Yeah, you're in people's ear and, and their ass all day, and it's it's nice. Well, what yeah. I couldn't believe is that you were a janitor for years. Whoa, look who did the research. I was uh, watching some <laughs> podcasts before and some interviews. What was that like being a janitor? Was it just a He's fucking a stalker? A yeah, weird creep. <laughs> well done, sir. Are those Warby Parker? I believe so. Yeah, me too. It's all I wear, fatty. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Warby. Love those Jews. Uh, oh, wait. oh yeah, janitor. Actually, you know, janitor sounds like a rough gig. It was a great gig. Headphones in. Nobody told me what to do. You know, it's labor. You don't have to use your brain. So I just thought of jokes all day or I listen to podcasts all day or music, mopping the floor. It was great. A janitor where? Uh, New York City at a hedge fund, like in a skyscraper. And I was in charge of, I think, four or five floors. So I'd have to move people's furniture. I had to, you know, clean the bathrooms. It'd be a big old bowl miscarriage in there, and I had to clean that out. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there'd be like a possum and the aviation ducks. I had to get that out. So it, it, it had its bad parts, but... I'd take that over like a desk job any day. Did you find yourself coming up with uh, material while you're like mopping the floor? Tons of material. I have a whole janitor chunk in my one of my specials from years ago. Uh, I, I would write in the boiler room like a psycho because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to <laughs> waste any time. And uh, yeah, it was a great gig. Any low, low thought gig. What a low. Uh, not using brain power. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go do data entry or spreadsheets. I'd kill myself. But, you know, nice and easy, mopping, Tom Petty in the blower, you know, having a great time. I love it, dude. Was that during the financial crash or right after, or was it a lot of empty floors? <laughs> it, was, it was right after. It was in the Twin Towers. That really made it hard. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was right after that. It was like, that was in 2008, and yeah. I think this was like 2010, 11. So, yeah, a lot of hedge fund. And I, and I was the white guy janitor, so everybody thought I was like a – a criminal or a drug addict or something. You know, I'd have guys in suits be like, what's up, man? What are you doing? What are you janitoring? What are you, you're, you're white. Uh, sorry, come work for my, us. My white alarm. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, and uh, it was great. Great, great gig. Really? Yeah, I loved it. The pay was shit. <coughs> shit, sorry, a little semen. Um, <laughs> the pay was shit, but uh, nobody bothered me. It was awesome. Yeah. It's probably a good job to be hung over to if you, mm. nobody clean up your own vomit you nobody's said, bothering you yeah you totally you're wildly hungover right now. oh i'm hurting man we did it up last night we did the store all night drinking free drinks all these friends are in town i don't get out here enough and then i left the store i'm staying at hotel ziggy which is across the street so i stumble across the street and i see pink dot you know the convenience yeah, store yeah, yeah, yeah. i go in there and i buy a couple of bottles of who knows what and then I get a bunch of guys back to the hotel, and we just <laughs> kept going. And uh, one of my friend's car got towed because we just kept drinking all night. I think I went to uh, I think I went to bed at about 6:30 a.m. Nice. And I woke up and did some other guy's pod, and now I'm in a van with a couple of weirdos. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, no uh, place I'd rather be. Thank you. Yeah. What uh. How many podcasts do you do? You have We Might Be Drunk. Is that it? No, I got it. We Might Be Drunk, which is a tough one because you drink, or I do. <laughs> so it's like we'll do two in a day, and it's noon, and I'm hammered, and I got shows at night or whatever. And then I have another one called Tuesdays with Stories, which is me and a buddy Joe List, and he goes on the road. I go on the road. We come back. We tell the tales of the heckles, the fist fights, the, the travel, you name it. And, yeah, those are the two, and they're going good. We have you on the other one. We don't have guests. Yeah, yeah. Not to worry, man. Not to worry. We got uh, we just we just put Sam. Is is it Morel? Morel, yeah. Yeah, Morel. It's a weird Russian Jew name. It's Maril. Sam Morel. Um, we, he, he's gonna be great, right? Oh, he's a killer, hilarious, great comic. He's got a Netflix special as well, 
and a hell of a joke, one of the best joke writers in the biz. So, What does better for your comedy, having a Netflix special or going on Rogan? That's a good question. The Rogan thing is good, but I think it used to be bigger, you know, like the before thing? the Spotify, the bump. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I'd say a Netflix, if the Netflix special clicks, like Segura just put one out, and it yeah. was in the top ten for two, three weeks. It was huge. Number one. Number one. Yeah. So that, I think, is big, and it's global. You know, that thing goes out to the whole goddamn world. There's some guy in a hut in India going, hey, this guy's funny. And then Rogan uh, is also great. But if the special's good, I think the special beats it. But there's a lot of bad specials out there. There's a ton of bad specials out there. So if your special's bad, I think Rogan's better. So is is, is Howard Stern, like, as big as he was? Like, are you guys no. trying to get on Howard Stern anymore to promote? I mean, does that I would still- love to. I mean, I'm a huge fan as a kid. He's gotten a little queefy over the years. You know, he's not what he used to be. He used to be fun. There's hookers. He's throwing cold cuts at a woman's ass. And there's a weird black crackhead. Great, great stuff. Beetlejuice. Now, yeah, Beetlejuice. Yeah. And now it's kind of like, oh, hey, I shouldn't have said this. And you're like, get out of here. You cashed all those checks when you were in blackface, you son of a bitch. And uh, <laughs> now you're like, oh, I've evolved. Oh, come on, you Jerry curled Hebe, get out of here. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Because he switched to AGT and got family friendly? Yeah, that's or? what it is. Yeah, I, and, and I think the climate changed. I yeah. don't know about the climate, but uh, but distinctly. And this, this is close to my heart, and it really hurts me. I can say that again. It hurts in an emotional way, which is why I'm so glad this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp, because there are certain kinds of emotional pain that it really is a good idea to get into therapy to work through. And there are a lot of good reasons to get into therapy. I do it because I want to protect my relationship. I want to fix the roof before it rains. And that's why BetterHelp is so crucial. It's a service online that's matched up 3 million people with professional licensed therapists. And they're offering the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast 10% off your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash stevo. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash stevo again there are some kinds of pain that you gotta talk about and that's why you want to get into therapy so go to betterhelp.com slash stevo to enjoy 10 percent off your first month and let's get back to it because i count 16 different times that I went on the Howard Stern wow. show. Wow. Yeah. That's 16. 16, man. I was like a go-to, man. Yeah. I'd go in there. Every time I went in there, I would do something that just like made Howard uncomfortable, <laughs> and that would make just great radio. I'd be stapling my balls to my leg. like I'd be like, I, mean, I went in there, and, and, and uh, I swallowed five goldfish. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, I would take it to another level. I, I brought like naked chicks with me. Like It was just like constant crazy. I like. I remember. I would. I had to deal with them. That I would tell him something I shouldn't tell him about another celebrity. Yep. For every plug. That ah. I, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna earn myself a plug by telling you like who I just did right. this with. Or, Knoxville's or impotent. Here we go. <laughs> Check out my new book or whatever. Right. right exactly. And. Um, Man, it, it was it was just a lot of fun, dude. And, it, and a plug from Howard Stern's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, dude, yeah, it, dude, Huge. It, was, it was it was it was rad. It was Game rad. changer. And um, right, and, and and you know what too is that I didn't even regularly listen to the Howard Stern show for all that time when I was regularly on it. I was just like a crazy drug addict and 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 whatever, you know. So like, and I was on it all the time. Then like uh, around the time he got on. Uh, AGT. Yep. He became a judge on America's Got Talent. Which no one saw coming. Right. Nobody saw it coming. And, and, and he was great on it, you know? Sure. He was great on it. And then, like, then he became, like, a family friendly. Yeah. You know? and, like, and, and, and it was about that time when I got the serious 
XM subscription, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I regularly listen to the Howard Stern show. Like, not only did I regularly listen to it, but I would only listen to it on the app on my phone so that when I got out of the car, it would pause the, you know, mm-hmm. I would like, I remember that. very yeah, yeah. careful to not like uh, miss any wow. part of any show. Like, I became like a die hard. He's great, he's the best interviewer, hands down. And at that time, as soon as I started listening to it, then I couldn't get on the show anymore. Ah. <laughs> like, like it's so crazy. I mean, like they'd let me on the wrap up show, and I'd get on there and talk. You think about, it's you thought it was because you opened up the elevator at Sirius? I don't know about that. I don't think that that's got it. I think just because Howard became the image changed, family friendly, kind of in like he his standard for the caliber of guests that he would have on. Like, just went crazy through the roof. Plus, he started only doing three days a week. Like, so there was mm. less opportunities to get in there. Right. And I just, like, like he only wants, like, super A-list, yep. like, major mega celebrities. And uh, so I can't get on the show anymore. But the irony, it was better when it was, when you were doing it. The show right. was, it was a better show. And that's the other thing, is that he, back in the day, he... He would ask every guest, like, what celebrities have you slept yes. with? How much money do you make? Like, it was all sex and money, yeah. like, really, like, crazy. So big-time celebrities were afraid to go on the Howard Stern sure. show because they didn't want to be asked those questions. And he could pull it out of anybody. He was yeah. the best at that. But now he doesn't do that anymore because he does. He wants to have, like, the craziest A-list celebrities so, like, everybody knows they can go on there and not right. be in an uncomfortable situation. He won't put anybody in an uncomfortable situation So do you think anymore. that's why his ratings went down? I don't know what it sure. went. Sure. I mean, probably, right? Yeah, uh, I would say so. I mean, I grew up watching him, and you watched it for the crazy shit, like the Artie Lang years. He's nodding off on heroin. Yeah. You know, the, the... You have girls getting on the Sibian. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. hot. I used to rub one out to that show <laughs> yeah, on sure. E. Remember that? Uh huh. <laughs> I remember he offered John Bobbitt, like, uh, an obscene amount of money to see his dick. Whoa. On, uh, when he did that big party, it was like, uh, I don't know but what it was. Turned- 60s? No, no, no. It was like way. He was like in the 90s. I remember I was oh. watching it, like when the whole John Bobbitt thing was going on. He just kept giving him ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. It's crazy when Mark was just sitting here, kind of like bashing Howard. Like I got like really uncomfortable. Oh, I'm like, sorry. Like, well, no, 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 no. I don't like because you you're not going to be able to go on. I just like can't go on anyways. Like, what do I even care? But right. like, I, I have this reverence for Howard. And, I do uh, too. <laughs> and it just hurts me that he changed because I, you know. You, he got a seat at the table being that guy, and then you get to the table finally, and you change. It's a bummer. It's like marrying a woman you love, and then she transitions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, what are you doing in that situation? Yeah, what are we doing here? I like your vagina. Now it's all <laughs> fucked up and twisted and mangled. It's not For sure, I'll analogy. still do it. Thank you. Yeah, I'll still do I'll it. I'll still do but, it. But, you know, I'd fuck Elliot Page. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> That's very genius. Um, the... Uh, that, that th- threw me right Do you off. have a memorable Howard Stern experience out of all the 16 well, I did. times? What I was going to say is that when, when my last book came out, my my, uh, my newest book. Hard j- Kick. A hard Kick in the Nuts. It just came out. I made a special video for Howard to try to get on Howard Stern to promote this book. Mm-hmm. And, and this is when we were at a venue that was a, a, theater, a theater that was so big that our tour bus was like parked underneath like in a special like you know yeah it, it wasn't outside the arena it was it, it, it wasn't an arena but it wasn't outside it was in it was underneath uh-huh. and i'm like in the bowels of this huge impressive thing and i said hey howard like uh yeah um here I am in this uh, this venue so big my bus is, is like underneath it and I show him like the tour bus all wrapped Steve-O and I'm, yeah. like, I'm like real proud of it I bought my own tour bus hell yeah like I got this book coming out I said I know you love it when people talk about the celebrities they've had sex with in my new book like literally like just lists the, it just goes right into every one of them Howard and like I know you like people talking about money and I was like to Howard I'm killing it I'm in like, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you everything I'm like Howard I'm killing it and I miss you dude like I used to be on the show all the time like 16 times I was on now I haven't been on in like a decade man and it's like I want my relationship with you back yeah <laughs> and, and uh, I did not get my relationship damn, with him back damn so, what yeah, a bummer so, so, so throw some more stuff uh, <laughs> I mean I'd love to do the show too but it just it sucks <laughs> it's a bummer but you know look how cute you 
you were. Look yeah. how young. What were you? You don't get a, a do for being handsome. You were a handsome guy back in the day. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, that. now you look like uh, the Crip Keeper. But back then, <laughs> you were a, a cute kid. You have a favorite whack packer? Oh, man. I liked uh, Bob. The, it was a tatard. <laughs> the, hey, uh, Scott, uh, Scott, you know what to do. Yeah, Eric you, the actor. You, Eric. You know Eric the actor. Do, yeah, Scott. he was fun. Yeah, you, you know, know what, what to, to do. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen Artie Lang pop up on different podcasts. Is, is he still sober? Do you see him around New York ever in the clubs? I do. He's a, he's a whole different guy. He looks different. His but he's, nose is better? Yeah, it's getting there. Uh, his hair's white now, and he's lost a ton of weight, and he's hanging in there, and he's still goddamn hilarious. He is but, always going to be hilarious, man. I love Artie. Oh, the he's the man. First time I was ever on the Howard Stern show, the very first appearance, I walked in there, and uh, I was like, "What do I said? Uh, like, I'm going to swallow five goldfish." That was my first time on. Yeah. And uh, and 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 I think Howard said, "No, you, you don't have to do that." And I said, "Howard." I didn't come here to waste your time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Artie said, God bless you. I says, I, he says, I love this guy. He says, you know how many people come in here specifically to waste our time? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it was just like, I had this, uh, you know, th this this wonderful relationship with Artie that, st that started, like, th at that moment. Yeah. You know? And he was just always super supportive of me and, and, uh, and, and, and back and forth. You know? no, so no. I'd love to hear him doing well. Yeah, what do you think of these, because a lot of people have, you know, the climate has changed, as we said, and a lot of people have gone a certain way. You know, you got to fit the, the narrative or whatever it is. got to go with the way the wind's blowing. And I mean, evidently you don't, because you... I, well, I'm like, nobody. I, I still have some freedom in this business. You know, I'm not in a Marvel movie. But my point is, do they sit up in, in bed at night and go, man, that was fun, and uh, it's kind of hard pretending to not stink, think that stuff is still funny... Or do you think they actually believe their own shit? They might get into like a relationship or something and like... What types of people are we talking about here? Like big celebrities who used to be kind of... On the edgier side. Yeah, and yeah. then they, they clean up their act. Which, like, if anybody has a come-to-Jesus moment... And look, I get it. People want to keep their jobs. Can, 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 can give me an example of one of these celebrities? Well, I mean, he's a perfect example. Okay, but other uh, than Howard. Uh, well, there's some comedians I don't want to name who got huge off of being irreverent and whatever and now they're like Amy Schumer counts in that category ah well think, she think actors she's still pretty gnarly pretty gnarly yeah yeah actors okay. yeah I'm trying to think of now I'm drawing a blank because I'm so hung over but I, I know what you're saying I think it's just kind of the, the climate and you're like well it, it's especially when they they go out and speak politically and you're like this fucking guy believes that right you know? right I, I can't I, I can't think of anybody but I know who you're talking you know about. what I'm talking about yeah. yeah and I just wonder if they're at home in the shower going like all right, I got by another day, you know, uh, I got through it. Or if they're like, no, no, I believe all the shit. I think they probably get in a relationship and they, like, you know, tr say some of the jokes to their chick or they're do and they're like, what the fuck did you just say? And it's right. like, well, pussy or who I used to be. <laughs> Isaac, go over here. Actors that were gnarly and are now soft. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can, uh, That's hilarious. Think you can word that a little differently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but do you think that the so-called climate is going to change back? Like, like, the, Do you think it's going to be like a pendulum where... I hope so, yeah, but, yeah, but you're happening. not going to forget who flipped. It's just sure. weird. Look, if you want to evolve and you want to be who you are, I get it, and that's all good, but you just happen to be doing it the exact way that it's fashionable. That's the part that bothers me. Like, yeah. oh, that really lined up perfectly for you. How <laughs> convenient. To yeah. type in actors who went woke. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. I try not to use that term. I feel like Tucker Carlson or something. <laughs> yeah. The most woke celebrities. And it's an NBC or MSN article. Any, oh wow! Um, any blowback over the Netflix special? Uh, not yet. I haven't looked too much. I don't. I'm not going to dig for it. But I haven't. Uh, you know, I haven't had a lamb's blood smeared on my front door or anything yet. So. I mean, I just I, I think that you did it very well. Hey, you thanks. Yeah. I, I think you did it very yeah, it was well. Great. Everything's a joke. I made even if I go down a dicey road it's always a turn at the end it's always fun i don't want to hurt anybody i'm not one of these guys like i want to walk the room fuck these pussies i don't right. get that shit you're, I, not, you're not ari 
No, no, I'm not Ari. <laughs> no. But God, man, was Ari's juice special good? Killer, oh, killer. Yeah, and, so it, good. and for an anti Semite, even. <laughs> I, no. Uh, no, it was great. And it was, it was, it's hard to have a niche special about one topic and have it still right. be good. Yeah. And he pulled it off. With mm-hmm. your special, where did the name come from? Old Investigative Vinny asking for the origin story. And I'm going to tell you the origin of a really good time because it's called Blue Chew. It's a tablet that's chewable. It's got the same active ingredients as both Viagra and Cialis, except it only costs a fraction of the price. And for the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast, you can get an entire month's supply totally for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. Now, why would you do this? Because it's fun, man. I'm telling you, it is fun, except a little bit of help in the bedroom because you're going to have a better time, man. Lux loves it when I show her my blue tongue. And to get this deal, Again, it's an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. You go to bluechew.com and use the promo code STEVO. Consult with the medical provider in a moment. You've got your prescription, and that month's supply of Blue Chew tablets is on its way to you for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. Again, it's bluechew.com with the promo code STEVO. Now, let's get back to it. Uh, it's an old term meaning like uh, soup to nuts at a, at a restaurant. You get the soup first, and then you have oh, the entree, okay. de- yeah, dessert, yeah. and then nuts at the end. Because I cover everything. We yeah. cover everything A to Z, top to bottom, soup to nuts. Did you know right away that's what you are going to call it, or were you going back and forth with some other ones? I had a bunch of names. I wrote them all down, and soup to nuts kept coming up. Like, this one feels right. Yeah. It feels right. And I like an old-timey term. My last one was called... Uh, out to lunch, like that guy's out to lunch. Yeah, you know. And then I had still got it. So I like an old, old-fashioned term, and it just means we cover everything: yeah. trans, school shootings, race, Holocaust, uh, gay, you yeah. name it. Yeah, man. We got it all in. Do you own a gun? No, no, never been a gun guy. I grew uh, up in the city. And, and you're in New York, too, right? I am I live in New York. I'm from New Orleans. Yeah, people I, don't own a lot of guns in New York. Yeah, I no. think the, the gun laws in New York are crazy. They're like, crazy. Way more strict than any other state. But, you know, growing up in Louisiana, you know, everybody had a gun. Yeah. But you lived in a mansion, though. Well, I lived in a, a shitbox mansion. Yeah, we should have had a gun because we got robbed all the time. But if, if we did, we'd got, we would have shot a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of guns a little. Like, I'll, I'll go, you know, if a guy hands me a rifle says, shoot that crow i can do that but like i'm not i don't want to be one of those guys in phoenix who's got a fucking glock on his hip and he works at a tile company i'm like do you need the glock is there a lot of gunplay happening at uh in the tempe (laughs) yeah i lived in arizona and i was like at the gas station i'm like dude this guy's a gun on his hip and everybody else was like fine with it right but i was like new there like what the fuck it's normal open carry yeah i would you know the cops have like the highest suicide rate they got a gun on them at all times. Uh, I've thought about killing myself. Yeah. It's right there. That's why I can't have a gun. Yeah. Or a yeah. dildo, for that matter. I'll put it up my ass every Think about 10 minutes. Killing yourself in sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you, you make a good point. The statistics show that um, gun deaths are like predominantly people being killed with their own gun yeah whether they shoot themselves with their own gun or like somebody else takes their gun and shoots them with it can you imagine that's like it's like when uh the baseball player gets hit by the pitch and he's so mad that the pitcher just beamed him that he charges the mound and then the pitcher kicks his ass too or it's like like uh, Like that that, that skate park that we went to and uh where where (laughs) he got sprayed by his own Uh, Uh, yeah yeah Yeah, i've jizzed in my own face before i know that feeling on accident that's like some guy comes in to rob you you know and you're like oh i'm not having this you're taking my stuff doing me wrong no way pal i'm pulling a gun on you the guy just takes your gun and shoots you with it (laughs) that's what that would happen to me in two seconds i'm a little bitch do you have a f- uh, favorite state to do comedy in? Favorite oh, country? Oh, country. Country or state? Well, this is the best country for comedy. Um, although Wuhan was pretty good. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Uh, Star Four is not bad. They got a funny bone out there. No, uh, I would say state is tough because Texas state... was my favorite, man. Oh, like, that's I, a good one. I'm going back. 
almost 10 years. They got and, Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio. Yeah, I, I taped my first special in Austin. Good choice. In 2015. Wow. I did, I did that. Yeah, where was your special filmed? Uh, Chicago. Okay. Yeah, but a state is tough because California is great, too. You got SF, L.A., San Diego, Sacramento. There's so many good comedy towns. But I, I think you got to go by city. Okay, what's your favorite city? Well, Denver. Something about fucking I Denver. I my second special in Denver. There you That's go. Right. It's killer. It's just they get it. And they're like real people. They have jobs. They have families. And they, they don't get offended. And they want to come out and just hear jokes. Yeah, you know, Utah, um, Salt Lake City. That's a great one. I have really mm -hmm. felt that because uh, this is a um, theory. But but because like the the heavy Mormonism, yes, you know people have this 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 restrictive, limiting like you know repression, a, a, yeah, repressed mm -hmm. like Mormon culture, yeah, that like that the, they really want to let loose more than anybody. It's like totally. the Catholic schoolgirls gonna be the yes. biggest slut. There you go. <laughs> you, you know, go to you Mormon go to Salt Lake. Sorry, everybody's all the guys look like out of work MMA fighters. They're covered in weird <laughs> tattoos. They're all virgins. They can't drink caffeine. Mm -hmm. So you tell a joke, they're like, "I need this." You know, they're jizzing in the aisles. <laughs> and then the women all look like out of work porn stars. They're all ta uh, big fake tits and weird bad tan and blonde hair. In Utah, yeah, yeah, there's some hot fucking girls oh, in Utah. Smoking hot, yeah, very sexy ladies. Because they're yeah. repressed. It's like you said, so they got to get it out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of hot ladies, that Vinny over here, he, uh... Ah, it's here an, it's an ugly lady. <laughs> 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 what, are you kidding? <laughs> Vinny uh, is a... Can we talk about it, Vinny? Yeah, go for it. I don't care. Talk about what? Has, are we uh, spilling the beans? No, no, not yet. Uh -oh. Not on that. Uh -oh. But, I mean, if you want... Well, we got his, his, girl. his girlfriend did porn. His girlfriend did porn. Whoa! And she's hot. Yeah, <laughs> it's good we're, for we're, you. We're, we're we're not going to direct anybody to any no. specific Is it website. Out yet? No, that's not out yet. Uh, we're not going to yeah. do. But we, we will say that if anybody were to search, give it for, a good <laughs> for, for for Vinny. Uh, performing acts. Yeah. <laughs> then, then it's out there to be found. Yeah. I mean, who are you, Adam Twenty Two over there? <laughs> Holy jeez! Yeah. Letting your lady get plowed, huh? Or are you doing the plowing? Both. Bo Ooh. Well, <laughs> she, does, both. she, she only did that on. once with the. Oh, really? She only did that once. Wait, <laughs> and that was Adam, before we met. And that was before we met. Okay. Uh, unlike Adam Twenty Two, it was the reverse order. Oh. She did. She plowed the other dude first, just one time to nice. check it out. Now she's plowing Vinny. Yeah, well it's, done. It's pretty rad, dude. I noticed <laughs> you were sitting crooked. <laughs> she's, she's um, like shockingly good looking. Really? Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm a lucky guy. Hell yeah. Because look at me. You know, I just don't know how I do it. Yeah, no, nah, you're yeah. cute. Oh, thanks, cuddly, dude. squeezable. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Look, look at this. Isaac is bringing up. Can we see a photo? Oh, oh God. Man. <laughs> what are wow. You, wait, what do you think? What about? are you searching, dude? Oh wow! I she's a looker. See. Hot tamale. I'd let her rail me in the pooper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, we've done that, too. <laughs> she, she, you she, really? she put a strap on? Not on? a strap on. No, we just do a little bit of butt play. Yeah. yeah. You guys I'm butt not ashamed of that. It's the 90s. Huh? Butt to butt, like Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> ass to ass. <laughs> Man, at least we're uh, uploading our podcasts on Rumble now. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know how well this one's going to fare on the tube. Uh, <laughs> well, she's covered. There there you go. Good for you, man. I, I, no offense, I pictured her looking like fucking Ralphie Mae. So, well done. Well done. Oh, thanks, dude. Good for you. Send me some photos of you guys making out. Just for proof. Hey, there's my ex. That's what she looked like. Man, old Ralphie. Funny yeah. guy. So what's the tour looking like now? Do you have a, a whole bunch of cities lined up, or I do you kind of just work out material and then start a tour? Yeah, I live in New York, so during the week you kind of do all the clubs and you you try out material, you try to hone it, perfect it, and then on the weekends I go to these theaters. I'm doing uh, the Ace tonight in in L.A. in downtown yeah. L.A., and then I'm doing Santa Bo uh, San Diego tomorrow, Balboa Theater. The Balboa Theater. Is that the one we did? Uh, I think it is. The where in the, in the gas lamp? District. I mean, yeah, epic. it's but, a yeah, it's epic. Dude. It's a beautiful. San, San Diego is a great place. Yeah. Great Isaac, comedy town. Isaac is saying yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> All right, there yeah. you go. Uh, I love it there. Yeah, I mean, dude, San Diego rules. Especially um, for an East Coast guy coming out there. It's uh, the beach yeah, and the how can people. You beat that? It's great. 
I go, forgive my ignorance, but but you're married. I, I see this. Oh this yeah, a married man. I locked it down before I go impotent. Um, <laughs> you know, I had a good run, and now I'm uh, now I got a nice lady. I think I have a couple rugrats at wow. some point. Yeah. Where'd you meet your lady at a show? I met her at a show. She was on a date, a bad date with a guy, and I had a I had a good set. And she said, "Fuck this queef. Who's he?" <laughs> really? And Were they sitting in the front? Sitting in the front. I didn't even think twice about it. I was just like, "Ah, oh, hot lady," and uh, she does porn as well. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, hot lady and some guy, and then I got a DM right after the show, and she quoted one of my jokes. I said, "Let's get a drink," and the rest is anal. <laughs> wow. Um, and how long have you been married? Uh, six months. Wow. So it's fresh. Yeah. I give it a year. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, <laughs> so you, when, when last time we saw you was right before you got married. That's right. That's right. I went, I pulled the trigger. I went through with it. And then how was the dating scene? I mean, did you have to kiss a lot of frogs around New York? Like, just because it's, it's hard dating somebody when you're touring, right? Or did you have a problem with that? No, no. I mean, uh, again, I, I really... Did the rounds? Yeah, you know, I had every STD in the biz. And, uh, <laughs> you name it. Did um, you ever think you're going to settle down, or you thought never, it was coming one day? Never did. I think most comics are like, we got the Peter Pan complex. Bill Burr has 35 minutes of material on how marriage is stupid and how you should never do it. You lose half your stuff, and then here he is with two kids living in the burbs with his black wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and and bless his heart, man. Yeah, she's great. He's great, and you're next. <laughs> I, I'm I am next, man. Get yeah. married. No pressure. Are you doing it? I'm gonna get married. Whoa, who is he? <laughs> All right. Here's the thing, dude. Um, and I've been very vocal about this. That because I've been engaged for a long, long time. Sure. And it's and, scary. Yeah, it is scary. And the deal is that um, my girl and I are not having rugrats. Mm. I made sure of that by getting a vasectomy. Mm. And instead of having children, we're gonna just be animal people so we've made our plans for the future to buy a big property and open up our own animal sanctuary we've been waiting to get married on that property and this is going to be my first time yep. announcing this sure is like we wow. are we, yeah. we found the property like our offer has been accepted we're on contract hell yeah uh, 44 acres Woo! and uh, and and that, that means the the first thing we do is we build our our wedding venue on the property wow you didn't say a city are you leaving that out for now Okay, you, you bullied me. No, I'm not, I, <laughs> you really you don't pushed hard. It's just outside of Nashville. Oh, wow. Nashville, good Tennessee. call. Good call. Great area. Yeah, they got open carry gun laws there. Nah. I was really looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. see you driving a truck around Nashville. You know, um, you don't need to get a, another car. Nah, I do need another RV, though. I, I love RVs. What can I say, man? RVs make me tick. And speaking of ticking... What's going on with your heart rate, man? Do you know what it is? Do you know if it's at dangerous levels? What's going on with your sleep? Are you getting enough restorative sleep? What's going on with your exercise, man? Are you burning enough calories? Well, I'll tell you, the answers to all of these questions come from my Whoop Band. And I got the cool, new, stylish Whoop Band. They've got all different colors and everything. And what is it? It's the most sophisticated tr fitness tracking device known to man. Hands down. I love it. I love my Whoop. And again, all the insights into your sleep, your recovery, your exercise, your everything, man. And dude, it makes me tick too. So check it out, man. Go to Whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P.com. Use the promo code STEVO, and you get 10% off at checkout. Plus, they're on the Whoop 4.0, which has got the waterproof charger. The charger just slides right on top. You never have to take it off. It is always telling you everything that you need to know about your body and your well-being. So one more time, go to Whoop.com. Use the promo code STEVO to get 10% off at checkout and you're gonna be a much healthier person for it. So, let's get back to it. Really? You, you think uh, you're gonna practice that freedom, that right, the open carry? Um, I 
can't picture myself being a gun guy, but but um, I too am in, in the process of, of working out material in the in the clubs, and uh, I'm getting into some gun stuff this time around. Woo! Yeah. Well, all that bestiality will give you some material. Yeah. You know, once you're, <laughs> you're out there on the farm, you're gonna fuck a horse. It's gonna happen. Yep, Mr. Hands. <laughs> that, that, that's right, man. I'm uh, going to do some gun shopping. For Whoa. My, my next show. Wow. Are you going to hunt? No. <laughs> I was thinking about shooting myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be your last appearance on Stern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll be good. But yeah, no, it's exciting times, man. Yeah, it's, look at us growing up. Yeah, it's you... exciting times, man. When's the last time you rode a skateboard? <sighs> I picked one up. This kid hit me up, uh, and he said, hey, I, I work for some skate magazine. You want to skate around? And I was so bad, and I, I did it for, like, two hours, and I, it kind of came back. Sure. And then uh, I he recorded it, and I landed a couple tricks, and we put it out, and everybody's like, look at this guy. He's pretty good. And I'm like, no, no. That took nine hours, and I failed most of it. I think I, I might have seen this. Yeah, uh, right there it is. That's it. You were skating a ledge, yeah. This, yeah, it's the winner in New York. Oh, uh, you know, you can skip all the... Co- oh, jeez. Oh, we don't want to see the fucking jokes. The jokes. Yeah, go to the, you should go back and go to the first one, because wasn't that the highlight reel? How long are you going to be in L.A.? I leave Saturday to go to Balboa Theater. Well, uh, I've been here about a week. Man, I'm, I'm having a skate party. No! Saturday, yeah. Oh, I feel like a kid again. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Oh, wow. We're gonna, we're I gonna, wish. We're going to have some heavy hitters. Who's, who are we talking? The heaviest hitters, dude. Yeah, uh, I, I can't. Um, Day one said he's going to try Oh, killer. I what love that Pudwell? guy. Tori Pudwell's in Japan for SLS. Also great. Jeff wow. Raleigh's confirmed. What? That yeah. when you when you told me Raleigh was coming, dude, I was like, dude, taken I'm back, just so I was, amped on Jeff Raleigh. He was Here one of my I am, favorites. Like, blowing people up who are going to come, but. Uh, I watched him on the Airwalk video in like 1995 or something. I love Jeff Rowley. Right, dude. I'm, I'm just so hyped about it, dude. I'm oh. so so amped on my ramp. Mm-hmm. I'm bummed I can't go to that. Wow, that would be... dude, that was a solid kickflip. Hey, right there. thank you, sir. Yep, little pop shove it there, toe yeah. drag. This is in New York. This is in New York. Yeah, these kids will hit me up like, "Hey, you used to skate? I'll film you." And I, you know, you try to make it funny. Look at that pop there shove it out, go. little toe drag. But hey. How many yeah. takes did that take you? That was about a thousand and four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, what, you grew up skating around New Orleans? Oh yeah, that was all we did all day. You know, pre-internet, we would just skate from nine to nine. Skate and jack off. Skate and skate jack and off. Skate and jack off. Then you watch skate videos at night, or you watch Jackass, or you watch whatever, and that was our whole life, and it was great. You uh, skated the mini ramps, and we built one in my backyard. We stole construction equipment over over time and finally put a mini ramp together. I had a little four footer in my backyard. Nice dude. Oh yeah. I, I my minus three and a half unless you measure it from the flat. Okay, that's a you good measure height. It from the, measure it from the ground, it's three and a half, but the flat's six inches high, so it's technically a three footer. You sound like the guy who measures his dick, like going all the way back to the ball sack. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, seven inches. Like, wait, you got eight inches of thigh on there. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you really jam the ruler into your pelvis. Get that extra mi- inch and a half. Did you post flat. your skate? Did you just post your uh, skate park? Uh, skate ramp on I, online. I put, I put uh, a clip. I, I have a reel. Okay. On my, on my IG. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, heavy skateboarding man going on. Yeah, that's a good looking ramp you got there. And that's a good side. You can't really get hurt on that. You can yeah. still do some tricks. Yeah, I love it, dude. I love it. I wanted it mellow. I wanted it short. But let's not alienate our, okay. our, our audience here. Let's not. Let's not. Uh... Yeah, say something racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these, we got to build that wall, folks. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had a. Uh, some I, asshole I, will clip that. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I had a wall joke at one point. Mm. I, I'm not really a topical, you know, comedy kind of guy, but I would. I enjoyed saying that um, the wall, um, Mex the 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 Trump's talking about they're going to build the wall and Mexico is going to pay for it. Yeah. So I don't see that happening. I think they're going to pay for the tunnel underneath it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, that's my joke. Boom. How do you like that? I heard it. I heard a great. That's a good one. I heard a guy, uh, Dan Bolger out of Boston, has a great joke. He's like, everybody gives uh, America shit for building a wall, but China built a great wall, and I've never seen any Mexicans there. <laughs> <laughs> pretty nice, good. Dude. Pretty good pretty joke. Good. Dan yeah. Bolger. 
I, I like that. When you were traveling around with Seinfeld, did, did you were you saying stuff like this, or is it you kind of have to keep it real clean? Well, we just did a, we did about four gigs, and we talked comedy the whole time. We're both huge comedy nerds, and I'm a huge fan of his. But he's a he's a regular dude. Like he just likes cars, baseball, and stand up. And we could we could shoot the shit for hours. And he likes an off color joke. I have a joke where I say, uh, you know, he's Jewish, and I say, uh, I met my my wife on that Jewish app, PayPal. <laughs> and we were, you know, he's a big Jew, and we were working on that joke, and I was like, I wonder if I should say Venmo or PayPal. And he goes, you got to say PayPal because it's got the word pay in it. That's more offensive. And I was like, you're right. Yeah. And it kills, but that was that was all him. So he gets yeah. it. He loves Pryor and Bernie Mac and Carlin and all that. So he's he just chooses yeah. to be clean for the challenge. Yeah. Carlin. Oh, what a treasure. What a oh, national big treasure. Big fan. Big fan. He's a huge hero of mine, and I met him. Wow. Yeah, did you ever meet him? I never met him. I, I went to a book signing, and he, he, he zinged me pretty good. Yeah, people really like Carlin. We, we cut a clip of Carrot Top talking about him and Carlin together, and that clip got millions and millions of right? views. And I didn't think you know people really... Well, those two together is so odd that I think you have to see that. Yeah. I would click on that in a second. Carrot Top, man, I like him. Man. I like him too. He he owns it, and he is who he is, and he's not changing. And I respect that. Have you ever seen one of his shows live? I, I saw would love him, to. I, I saw Carrot Top uh, the same night after we recorded the podcast. Oh, that's him. sick. Loved it. Yeah. You I know what's really cool like about Carrot Top? Norm McDonald, my hero, used to really raz him. And when Norm died, Carrot Top played it at his show. And I was mm. like, look how funny Norm is. You know, he could see, like, yeah, he's just doing comedy. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then Carrot Top was cool enough to allow himself to get made fun of in this video, which is like an epic. You've probably seen it, the Conan video. Mm. It's one of the best moments in comedy history. I uh, spaced out uh, oh, okay. what, what, what you just said. Uh, Pull yeah. this up. That, that, that go back and, and have the yeah, Norm McDonald. There it is. So he's on Conan with this. This is in the 90s with this lady. And uh, you don't pay for fucking YouTube? Ah, uh, jeez. Well, we are in a van. <laughs> okay, you can hit the volume, by the way. There's an option to turn that out. There you go. Uh, he's still learning, folks. I don't want to give it away. It's 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 sorry. It's seven and a half minutes. It's too long yeah. to play on here. But the the gist of it is he's shitting on Carrot Top's new movie, Chairman of the Board. And he's calling it box office poison. He's killing. And he goes, what's the name of it? And Norm goes, chairman of the board. And, si and Conan goes, make a joke out of that. And he goes, well, it's a board spelled B-O-R-E-D. And Conan falls out of his chair. <laughs> it's a great moment. Yeah, it's hard to get Norm. I remember on one of the roasts, people were trying to, like, you know, bash him. And he just kept, like, reading his newspaper and looking yes! up. And, like, wh whose roast was that? That was, uh, was that? Chevy Chase, Bob Saget. It was Bob Saget. I think it was yeah. Bob Saget. He just kept reading his paper. So good. He's the king. He's maybe the, one of the funniest people to ever live. I think. <clears throat> what did uh, What did Pee Wee Herman die of? Did it say what cancer it was? I think it was the cancer you get from jerking off in a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what cancer that was. I was watching because Danny Elfman had a tribute and they played some Pee Wee Herman in there. He's doing some music at a show. I was a huge Pee Wee guy. Yeah, Loved Large it. Marge. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Brain tumor. Uh, brain tumor. Brain tumor. Scary shit. But he lived, man. He's got photos with everybody. Everybody loved Pee Wee. I met Pee Wee one time. Really? Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Did you Paul coke Rubens. with him? I think it was uh, at Fallon. Oh, I thought you were gonna say and... the porn theater. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, the NBC studios in New York. What was that? What was that like? What'd you guys do? I, he was just there, and I just met him, and he was. Kind of quiet, like mm, was he in, uh, in character or was he? Oh wow, I don't remember that time I met him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, well, you had a drink in your hand. I wouldn't imagine. Yeah. Wow, dude, I look like a pile right there. <laughs> you don't remember that? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I vaguely remember. I know. Yeah, I remember that night. I remember I met Adam Sandler. Whoa! What was the event? Ah, uh, well, it looks like it was a spike something. Or oh, other. okay. <laughs> spike TV. What year event. was that? That would have been 2007. Oh, right, there you right, go. As the wheels fell What are they off. selling here? They're selling a photo of you? I guess so. You get it for 500 bucks for a large. <laughs> <laughs> 
No offense, but who's <laughs> shelling that over for this? I mean, it's a good pick. You, you look cool, and he's terrified. <laughs> Whose lipstick is that on you? Do you even know? Uh, I do know whose lipstick that ooh, was. Ooh, ooh. Right. Well, oh, baby. <laughs> hey. Got to save for Howard Stern. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, that, that, that was Kat Von D's lipstick. Nice. Yeah. She did wear a lot of lipstick. Oh, Guy's Choice Awards. You couldn't do that now. No. Guy's Choice you couldn't, huh? No, this whole channel would be labeled toxic, you know, because it was like cars and boobs and stuff. That was like during the Man Show era. Right. Maxim Magazine. Yeah. There was a lot of that going around. Good times. Really that was a great times. show. All right, dude. <laughs> All right. Are, are we running out of steam, dude? No, I, I, I could keep going. I didn't. I felt like I was cutting people off, so I no, didn't want to. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Never, never, I'm always just sensitive. It is weird. Everybody's dying. Like Pee Wee died. Prince is dead. David Bowie's dead. Tom Petty's dead. Sinead O'Connor's dead. I mean, this is this is terrifying. Yeah, I thought Sinead O'Connor was dead already. I didn't, ah. I didn't know she died, you know, I I hadn't heard from her in a long time. Yeah, she was kind of weirdly hot. Mm -hmm. She had the head shaved, and she's tearing up pictures of the Pope. But if you got to look at her mug, it was a good mug. <laughs> Pull up a a picture of her with hair. How did she uh, pass? I think cancer. Nah, I think she was a suicide. No, no is that way. right? I believe she was a suicide. Interesting. It took her long enough. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think she'd knock that out earlier. She had that thick Irish accent, which I love. Oh, maybe she's British. Never mind. No, she's from Ireland. Dublin. Oh. Cause of death was not stated. Oh, I guess you're right. So when they say that, that means it's a suicide? Definitely. Ah, right there. She does look pretty dope. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty lady. Yeah, it was like 1983. Yeah, that helps. But not the middle one right there. Kids are hot. Yeah, she like, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, she looks rough there. Well, look at that's a that's a nice face with the black turtleneck. Yeah, yeah. who who who? That one actress really took a turn. Uh, she was on uh, Surviving the Stone, or um, uh, um, yeah, she went to my high school in London, England. Kathleen Turner. Kathleen oh, Turner. Oh yeah. She was yeah. unbelievable. Romancing, Romancing the, the Stone. Stone. Yeah. She was fucking drop dead gorgeous, and then and then I saw her again, and she was just. Haggard. Are you going to be mean to people now? Huh? Yeah. What the hell, man? <laughs> well, next, me? next thing you know, he's going to be talking about uh, Bridget Fonda. Bridget Fonda. Wait, is she the old lady with uh, Lily Tomlin? No, nope. that's Jane that's Fonda. That's Jane Fonda, who still looks amazing, Bridget, by the way. Bridget Fonda was the girl that would play the uh, the hitman in the '80s yep. movie. What? Super hot. Uh, yeah, she was Pull like my up. first crush. What? She's not hot anymore. Well, everybody gets old. I mean, we're human here. Guys age pretty well. If they yeah. Don't. Tom Cruise looks great. Tom Cruise is fake. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no, I don't know. He's probably I, like... Dude, Paul Brisky said, he said, man, can you imagine if it wasn't for Scientology, mm. Tom Cruise would be the coolest guy who ever lived. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that baby blood keeps you young, though. <laughs> yeah, he's probably drinking some. Yeah, why not? What is it called? Adrenochrome. Uh, that's the one. Yeah. Cool. You think that's true? I don't think so. No? I just like to joke, but, you know, I'm in QAnon, so what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> With the TV just turned off, the whole van Yeah, we off. lost power in the van. Oh, shit. Oh, we lost power in the van. Probably because oh. of the heat. Are the mics working? Yeah, yeah no. The mics, yeah, yeah. The mics are plugged into that big-ass battery pack. They're listening oh, to yeah. us. They know you're saying shit. <laughs> yeah, Scientology <laughs> put a spell on us. You ever try to go to that building? They will... Kick your ass right out of there. Somebody told me that it's a hotel you can stay in, too. No way. And I said, bullshit. And he's like, no, I swear to God, it's a cheap hotel you can stay in. It's beautiful. Wow. Wait, what's the billboard? It says, uh, are you curious why so many people are Scientologists? Well, it's an odd group. It's Tom Cruise. Like, number one, I'm not yeah, curious. Yeah, yeah. Number Travolta. two, number one, I don't, I don't think there's really that many. <laughs> no. Yeah. Everybody's falling out. <laughs> well, the rumors they got something on you. Like, you tell them you ran over a kid in 1984. and mm -hmm. you They know, get you out of it. Yeah, they get you out of it, but they go, but we know. So you got to stay in this or we'll, we'll leak it. That's Do heavy. they get you out of it? I thought that their whole deal was like, okay, now how Scientology works is you tell us all the bad stuff you've done. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And they get you out of it. Oh, I didn't know that well, if you kill someone, them. they cover it. It's like right. they own everything. But, I mean, look who Travolta kind of went cuckoo. Will Smith, obviously, is a... Will, Will Smith Scientologist. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh wow. what, yeah, that's where that anger came from. 
that and his wife fucking other men. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very well documented. Oh, that's not me speaking and it's out all of the very valid. Yeah, there you go. The red table horseshit. Yeah. Uh, who else? Oh, yeah. That uh, Brooke Shields. This, oh, yeah, man, that's sad. The that zip that seventies kid. Yeah, the guy who just got in trouble in McMaster's. Was yeah. he Cy? And yeah, tall? Uh, Danny OG? Masterson. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he left Scientology, and then now he's going down. Then he had court Whoa. cases. Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. I'm like going it. Muslim. I'm going to do a curveball. I'm going Muslim <laughs> at the end. Yeah. 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 Your, your set would do great in the Middle East. Oh, yeah. That would be fun. They'll cut my head off. You talk about show. Muhammad, the whole deal. Oh, yeah. They love that. <laughs> you know, comics here bitch about, hey, canceling. You can't say shit. They'll no, cut your head off. Go do a Muhammad joke over there. They'll fucking put a hot poker up your ass till you die yeah you, ha you had a, a, a tweet that was so funny to me it was uh, um, Allah Akbar is like let's go for white guys Allah yeah let's go is Allah Allahu Akbar for white guys you know? yeah. <laughs> let's go white guys love saying let's go yeah it's, it's our it's so Allah good. Akbar <laughs> yeah. I think the funniest tweet I ever read please was by Jeff Ross okay okay he tweeted this TMZ article. It was like that. It was like the day it happened. The Magic Castle mm. here at the uh, oh, yeah. the, the Magic Castle on Highland. Uh, yeah, and they they found a magician dead. He had hung himself in a closet at the Magic Castle. All right. And um, Jeff Ross tweeted the TMZ article with his own little caption. He says his last words were abracadaver. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, love it. I, mean, I love it. Just it's the so day good. of. I, lo I love I a mean, good joke. Yeah, yeah, my favorite meme was uh, the one where there's a video of Trump kind of like at the press conference, like, and, it, and, it, and then he's just like, did you did pull, you pull out? out? <laughs> 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 you know, it's always like a funny joke I, with like guy friends. It's like, you know, did you have sex last night? And you know, they're like, yeah, like, do you use a rubber? And yeah. Like, no. And everybody just laughs. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. I had one, uh, The Bachelorette was coming on and they, the, the headline was, I don't know who, New York Post said, uh, was Bachelorette was forced to choose a black woman, you know, and I wrote a. I I now now you know how I feel dash Joe Biden, because <laughs> of Kamala. Yeah, but I did it right when that was all happening, and that that one really blew up. Did, that, did people like it or were they outraged? Yeah, a little of both, but that's you know part of it. Did you have the joke in your last special about the uh, Miss Miss America or Miss Universe that was trans? Is that you? I had a, a Down Syndrome Victoria's Victoria Secret model Secret. joke. Okay. I had a lot of those. Uh, no, I don't have the trans one. But, but that's true, though, right? There was a Victoria's Secret model that was had Down Syndrome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was cute. She's really pretty. The joke was I'd go downs on her, you know, which is an easy joke. Yeah. And then I said, I feel sorry for the women, the woman who didn't get the job. Like, I didn't get it. Who got it? You don't want to know. Kill yourself. Get out of town. Change careers. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Down Syndrome oh. Barbie now. I mean, they're oh, having a moment. Are they really? Oh, they yeah. They really have that? Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, they exist. I don't think they're buying stuff. I mean, you could give them just like a, a bucket of paste and they'll be happy. But, uh, <laughs> you know, give them some candy. But, yeah, good for them. They're having a moment. Yeah, there's that, like, just Hidden Camera show where they, where they jumped out and they scared this lady walking by, but she had, like, some sort of Down syndrome. Yeah. And she was just, like, had a full fucking meltdown. And they're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And, like, the lady just flipped her shit. Wow. And it was just the wrong person to fucking do that to. And they're strong. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to fuck with them. They'll flip a car over. Oh, yeah. And then hump it. Um, did you see the Barbie movie? I have not. I would like to, but I have not seen it. I, I like uh, Margot Robb. I, I've only heard positive feedback Same. about it. Really? Every, it, it seems like every chick I know has seen it twice. Wow. And every dude I know who has seen it said good things about it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I heard it's beautifully done. I heard Ryan Gosling is hilarious. I heard, it's Greta Gerwig, who's always good. She directed I, it. I heard that... 
Barbie is actually a doll in the movie. Mm. How's that, how do you do that? It's like a real act, a live action movie about a real doll. Really? Like, I didn't hear that. I don't know. I don't That's know what that may, maybe Lux is pulling my leg, but she <laughs> said that um, it's about a, a do- she's actually a doll in the movie. What about Oppenheimer? I saw it. I, I couldn't really get into oh, it. Oh, come on. Really? Did you I, like it? I never saw it. I haven't it. seen it either, but I'm, I'm excited. I love Nolan. I, mean, I love the story. It, it, it's not bad. It's Don't not tell bad. me how it ends. <laughs> 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 it, it's not bad, but I was just like, man, you know, like I, I'm the guy who watches a movie that's based on a true story yeah. and then goes immediately to watch the, the real yes, documentary. Yes, which is always better. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, I was just kind of in the movie theater thinking, like, man, I'm, like, very interested in, like, the documentary. I'm going to like that a lot more. Yeah, yeah, totally. I heard it's, it's do we need a three-hour-plus movie? All we talk about is our attention spans are going away, and now they're making movies longer. Yeah, like, the, 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 during the pandemic, they did the uh, Martin Scorsese was four hours. Oh, the Irishman. Fuck that. What are we doing here? Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, it it took me six one... times to watch. Yeah. yeah, edit the shit. What are you, Judd Apatow? <laughs> Cut it down. And, uh... The defense of Oppenheimer did not feel like three hours. Okay, okay, that's good. I had good. to pee. I did leave the theater to pee at one point, but... Did you go by yourself? No, I went with Lux. Hmm. IMAX? No, I don't know. No, no. Climax? We did, we did the one um, where you recline in the seats. Oh, those, those big leather chairs. They Sometimes they vibrate. It's fun. I should have mm-hmm. seen Brokeback in one of those. <laughs> I'd get yeah. my ass pounded. You have that- a You have a favorite movie? Favorite movie, of Jesus. All time? I don't know. Cuckoo's Nest is great. Uh, cool Hand Luke, I love. Yeah. Um, I love something about Mary. Uh, I'm all over the road. I got I got a lot of movies I love. Yeah, yeah. I like Oh Brother Where Art Thou, Cool Hand Luke. Great. Probably Shawshank Redemption. Oh, uh, what's it called? Uh, no Country for Old Men. Yep. Two oh, Girls that's One so Cup. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good list. <laughs> Two Bears One Cave. Yeah, they don't make good movies. Two Bears movies. One Cup. Yeah, the movies are fucked, you know, because you heard about the DVD sales. Like, an Office Space was a great comedy. Yeah. Mike Judge. Yeah. It bombed in theaters. But you would make the money back on the DVD sales, which were through the roof because it was like a word-of-mouth cult yeah. classic. Now the DVDs are gone. You're fucked. But I think it... Yeah, because... You get a second life on streamers, though. But there's like, a yeah. lot of dog shit on streamers. Right. Um, yeah, they just had that big weekend of uh sebastian versus bird that's right there. and um my father what was the what was the sebastian's movie uh yeah about my father about my father and and bird had the machine right those are both on netflix uh no but uh but apparently um bert's movie i mean the, the, the narrative was that they didn't like perform very well at the box office but i'm told bert's movie stands to become very profitable in its pay-per-view uh, Next windows. I heard the same with, thing uh, with streaming, paper, you know, whatever. That that Burt's movie is really going to come out on top of that. Yeah, I feel oh, like nice. I, I would rather watch a movie streaming than in the movie theaters now. For some reason, of course, the pandemic changed all that. I it, think. it did, and it's like I, I hate Marvel movies, DC, like all that shit, unless it's like a Wolverine, right. or something like that. And like that's all that you, <laughs> that's there for. It's like saying I, you know, <laughs> these guys find little things to nitpick. Well, well like, said- it's true. Like, all Marvel movies suck except for, you know, Wolverine or Batman or... I don't uh, even... Neither of those are Marvel. I think those are DC. Same <laughs> shit. Who Wolverine cares? is Marvel. Batman is DC. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I get... It's such a weird sentence. I hate these Marvel movies, but I love Wolverine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, this is just completely different. Uh, I, I, I hate men, but I love a good sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. But I know what you mean. Hugh Jackman's awesome. Of course. Yeah. It's a great. It's a great time. But yeah, people go see that because that's a theater movie. I got to go see fucking Iron Man yeah. in the theater. Iron Man one's great. Yeah. Deadpool's great. Great. But like the the Avengers or all the fucking bullshit. Like I can't even. I know we're down to Hawkman and uh-huh. the Thor. When did Thor get big? I fuck Thor. Yeah. Venom. Venom, we're scraping the barrel here. <laughs> well, what's yeah. next? Colostomy man, you know? Like, come on, it's, it's too much. <laughs> With a blue beetle is the new one. Who the fuck? Really? Never heard of blue beetle? Ant man. Ant man. Get out of here. Blue beetle. That's a real one. 
Yeah. yeah. Billboards all over town for Blue Beetle. Oh, really? It looks like George Lopez is in that one. No. Oh. That's who plays Blue Beetle? No, but he plays <laughs> like old a Mexican. Red, he might be the father of Blue Beetle or something. Oh, great. I've heard some crazy, crazy stories about George Lopez. Really? Oh, lay it on. Can we get into it? suitable for speaking at a Ooh, public level. Ooh, easy. What do you got? <laughs> oh, you brought it up. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Why don't we wrap this up right here, and and I'll tell you some stuff. Oh, wow. boy, what a tease to the listeners. Yeah, go ahead and Google it. All right, <laughs> give it a good. Uh, Lopez yeah. going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve-O. What are you doing to me? Yeah. I didn't, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not. He's like, what did I do? Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying if it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's crazy stories. You're talking about his George Lopez tacos? I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, did I say that it was bad? No. no. I just said it's not, maybe it's not my place. Okay, that's tell fair. about his charitable efforts. <laughs> 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 you know, I don't need to be patting his back at a public level. It's not necessarily appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Touche. Love it. Yeah. But with that said, man, dude, I, I fucking, damn, I really, really like you, Mark. I like you, Steve-O. You I, guys are awesome. I, I posted that thing on Instagram where I added you, and I realized, man, I'm not following this guy. I'll not, follow I'm, back. Yeah, well, dude, I, I uh. Well, we're older. I, everybody's like, you're not following me. I'm like, I don't even know how to work this shit. I don't, it doesn't, I, I like you. I'm, I'm here dude, with you now. What is, what is trust, following? Trust me, I wasn't, I wasn't offended. I wasn't, no, uh, I, I didn't follow one or another. I'm not even following my wife. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm very, I'm just, I'm a big fan of yours. Ah, uh, it's mutual. I, uh, just, you know, like, dude, we, we talked to so many people on this podcast and, it's just, it's just such a... You're the fourth funniest we've had. <laughs> I'll take it. That's pretty good. The Eric Andre episode was killer. Oh, uh, well, thanks, man. The uh, We just did the longest one ever. Mm. Oh, who was it? Oliver Tree. Oliver Tree. He's a, You've seen him. He's a okay. very, you just might not know the name. Okay. Very unique guy. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I hope that our paths cross. They will. I, I'll be uh, sleeping yeah, in this New van. York at the end of the month. Oh, great. Heading to New York at the end of the month. I'd, I'd love to... You have a skate sesh. I'd, I'd love Let's to, do it. I'd love to jump into uh, the cellar and, and okay. work some stuff. We'll get there. you in oh, there. That'd be sick. We'll get yeah, you in there. Yeah. I, got, I got some pull over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm right on. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring my board. We'll we'll rip it up. Okay, last last thing. Where are we sending people? Where oh, we... marknormancomedy.com for tickets, dates, videos, you name it. I'm all over the road. Big tour. And uh, Soup to Nuts on Netflix. Check really it out. Funny. Really fucking Thank funny. you, man. I appreciate it. A anything else? Uh, hey, praise Allah and uh, don't touch kids. <laughs> <laughs> As I say in a van. Yeah. It's a little it's hypocritical. Dude, I love that, man. Thank you, brother. Hey, thank you, man. Oh, yeah. Fun times. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, hey, good. comedy. Yeah, you really, really are good. one fucking funny cat. Oh, thanks, guys. It was a, You guys are a good audience. How about that? Was that a wild episode or what? The Howard Stern stuff felt pretty controversial, and it was, like, really emotional for me, man. I grieve the loss of my relationship with the Howard Stern Show. I grieve for it. I'm hurt by it. But, hey, man, um, let me tell you this. Uh, Mark Normand, I love the guy. And I love his We Might Be Drunk podcast co-host, Sam Murrill. Now, you might know that our last episode was Sam Murrill, and I'm a little nervous that it's going to look a lot like Mark Normand is way more popular than Sam Murrill. If you guys don't hop back to last week's episode and get your eyes on it. We don't want Mark Norman to outperform his bro. So if you didn't see that Sam Marill podcast, then jump back to last week because I don't want any hurt feelings between those two dudes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, man. And I love you guys, the street team. Did I tell you that we're making street team t-shirts? I said it last week, but I'm... It looks like a lot of people didn't hear that because that Sam Marill podcast is kind of... Uh, petering. <laughs> Just kind of putting, put, putting along. Anyway, I love everybody. I love you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>